This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. filmed most of this video a little while ago back when it was sort of more relevant but I wanted to hold off because I felt like I was just sort of piggybacking on an idea which um, I don't know it didn't necessarily feel right to put that video out then but I've since had conversations with other folks um, and I felt like yeah this entire situation um, which presumably you would have known about from a couple of weeks back sort of involving um, sort of made me feel like well, this is exactly why I think it's difficult for people to trust um, people that make videos specifically on YouTube with a gear focus. Basically in my experience I started off doing this quite a while ago but as things have grown you do get more interest from the gear side of the world. You know companies that are trying to you know get their product out there which is of course what they're trying to do but I don't necessarily think it's great for you as a viewer necessarily um, especially if it's not necessarily disclosed or not made clear by whoever's making the video when that piece of gear has been either sent for free or when they're being made to not made paid to make a video I do think that is the least that you could do so most recently for me i've actually had strymon or someone from the people that represent strymon in the uk ask if i wanted to loan some products and ask me what my rate was let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing me do some strymon based videos but uh, on the flip side i kind of feel like if i was really interested in some of this stuff shouldn't i just go and buy some of it um, and in terms of, you know, actually reviewing products and stuff like that, I think some of you guys are interested in kind of honest thoughts. Can you give properly honest thoughts if you're taking money from that company? I'm not so sure. That's kind of what I'm trying to do on the channel is have, you know, more realistic discussions around pieces of gear. You know, it's possible that I could get sent most pieces of gear that I'm interested in or get a significant discount. But is that the representative experience of most people watching the channel no could i afford to buy gear that i'm genuinely interested in or borrow it or whatever yes so should i realistically be trying to seek out payment for demos over and above what i already do um probably it feels a little bit to me like i don't need to go down that route too much i do the occasional paid demo but i will tell you um, for example, for Boss, when I build their tone sets, I'll go into that later in the video, they pay me for those. Um, I've done very occasional, like two or three um, paid videos for Yamaha Line 6. I do regular work for G66 uh, in terms of making videos for Fractal. I've sort of called it on doing the Fractal versus whatever device comparisons because it feels now like there's like a little bit that's muddied the waters if you like it's difficult to I think be totally um, 
objective or try to be if you're taking money from various parties. Uh, that was one of the problems that I kind of perceived when it was shown that someone being paid by Neural DSP was comparing it to a Kemper and you think, well, what is actually going on here? I don't know, I feel like the only real value in YouTube demos in some ways is that you can hear the product, which in sort of like print demos and print reviews, you don't really get a sense for how the thing sounds. Uh, another thing is if you know that you're playing or your tastes are similar to a certain player, you can kind of think, well, if they're getting on with that thing, maybe I would. Uh, and get to actually hear the product, which of course you don't with a print review, as well as it obviously being sometimes nice to hear music made with a piece of gear. But I do think that if you then take out some of the objective kind of reviewing stuff, if you say, well, this person doesn't really compare stuff, if you take away comparison as well, I think the, the value of a, a video or online demo can kind of diminish a bit but certainly if it's not being transparent you're not telling people when it is that you have a stake in a company or you're getting paid by this company or you have a relationship that's ongoing with this company I think that then even more diminishes the value of an online demo in my opinion I used to feel as a guitarist and still do now is that most of the time this stuff is about making choices about how to spend money or when to spend money or if you want to spend money or how a piece of gear might be useful, how would you use a piece of gear rather than, you know, just, I don't know, it's complex, isn't it? But do you get any value in YouTube demos, reviews in general? I'd like to know your thoughts. Um, and like for me with the Line 6 or various modeling stuff, I at least try to show you on the screen how that I've I've put the thing together. So yes, whilst I'm selling the presets as well, if you can't afford them in theory, you could just build them as well, follow along with the video. I hope there's some value in that. Uh, as I say, for me personally, I don't do too many paid demos anyway, but I can totally get, and it's certainly early on in my, you know, viewing the perception for me was, you know, well, I can't trust a lot of this stuff because I'm pretty sure these guys are getting paid to say this stuff. And if they're getting paid, surely they like everything what are their actual preferences what are the things they really like um that was the question for me and i don't know that to me i think it's still important to to try and pass and figure out is what does this person actually use all the time to try and figure out preferences in that way before i don't know what i'm talking about so uh, i'm not sure if you've seen some of this recent kind of Ferrari around uh, the KDH Lee Anderton, the kind of victory amp drama. I felt like I knew that Lee Anderton had something to do with victory amplifiers. I didn't know why I knew that. I've since thought that actually one of my friends who sort of semi-connected in this sort of space, and I've asked him and he's, I'm gonna leave his name out of this for, for once. I asked him and he said, oh, I've kind of connected the dots and some industry insider kind of knowledge. I'm seeing kind of like a lot of backlash against KDH in this. I'm not sure exactly like why, because to me it does seem like it's a bit of a story. And as someone who is on YouTube and makes videos playing guitar, I feel like there's an assumption generally that almost everyone is doing everything for clicks, for views, um, and that everyone's potentially willing to say anything for money, um, and that there's a, always a profit motive with, with all of this stuff, and that if you're likeable in some ways, like Lee is, obviously, in the Andertons guys, then you might side with them, even if what they're not said over the last sort of decade. I'm not gonna go over the video too much because I think you should check out the KDH video on it. Um, and then on a forum, I see a lot of kind of backlash and in the comments, you know, about KDH sort of like disparaging what he does in general. But I think KDH has quite an important role to play in terms of like shining a light on some of the stuff that maybe isn't that obvious because people have said that obviously Lee was an owner of Victory but it's not clear how they know that they're not disclosing 
why they know that and it's not been said I don't think explicitly up until Lee released his thing saying that he is so why I care is because in general the the idea I think as an audience watching something on YouTube is that you get some sense for whether a person actually likes this product that they're talking about if they're doing a gear demo doing a gear review the majority of my stuff is not paid work so basically what I've tried to do in general on this channel is to to spend my money like a normal person might or not even a normal person a, pop, a person with a gear addiction might um, and I found that generally following that or borrowing gear off of friends generally that is the stuff which actually I find more interesting because it's a piece of gear that I've actively sought out or I've got a, some sort of connection to um, versus the other side of things like as the channel has grown thanks to people like you watching it you do get people approaching you and saying will you demo this you know sometimes it might be a guitar plug-in um, and oftentimes my answer is I'm not really that interested um, or you know yeah it's, it's a bit of a difficult one like I know that there are certain videos that will be interesting to people so if it was a Fender or a Gibson or someone like that I'd be much more inclined to say yes if it's you know an audio interface from China um, I don't think that many people are going to necessarily watch that video anyway likewise sometimes with the plug-in stuff it might be a, a new company or a company bringing out something obscure and I'm you know a little bit unsure of whether it's worth their money paying me to do a demo um, I don't charge crazy money for this by the way but I think either way you know any amount of money spent on a demo who knows but I think the idea is that if if this sort of thing keeps happening where people have these undisclosed kind of ties to companies then why would you trust anything so the the companies that I do work for so G66 the European distributors of Fractal I make a video for them every Wednesday I don't tend to do too much Fractal stuff on my own channel partly because it gets more views and has more of an audience over there anyway. It was my favorite modeler other than Line 6 anyway. Line 6 have paid me to do very occasional work and they have sent me gear as well. But I do say that in the videos when they've sent me that piece of gear. I think that's the very least you could do really. But of course, not every single video would I necessarily say it and that's kind of one of my problems is that I do quite a lot of videos with different pieces of gear and like with the same piece of gear over and over again so to say every time this was sent to me by line six might not be necessary but it's worth knowing I guess isn't it right um, I did buy the catalyst because again for me I do want to have some sort of investment in some of these pieces of gear rather than just you know not uh, the Hotone Ampera I bought the Neural DSP Quad Cortex I bought. There's maybe another video in that because it broke. Um, but I'm not sure how to do that video without coming across badly. Boss, I actually have quite a lot of involvement with. They pay me to make live tone sets, which go up on the Boss Tone Exchange so that people can use those and occasionally let me keep the piece of gear. Um, occasionally it goes back. But Boss are actually kind of one of the companies that uh, are very open. Uh, uh, to, to working with um, people like me so boss yeah actually are, are pretty good from my point of view but in terms of transparency and that sort of stuff I do say in every single video that they paid me to create the the live tone set and that the piece of gear has been sent I think that's in, that is the least you could do right if you're going to be starting to get into the territory of doing like the paid demo stuff then I think necessarily you do need to say you know when it is stuff that someone's paying you to, to show right I, I think otherwise you know I think it gets a little bit confusing as to why someone would continue to watch your stuff um, and for me personally like not everything I do is around the idea of getting views anyway so for instance I know that oftentimes the stuff which is kind of teaching e based or lesson based is going to do less views than some of the other stuff 
but it's not really all about every single video being the most sort of um, click baity or the most uh, relevant or the most likely to do well. You know, sometimes I just wanted to talk about a weird little legato thing that I've just found, stuff that actually interests me, stuff that really interests me, guitars that I really like, you know, things like the PRS DGT SE, things where there's lots of videos that I've made about that because I felt like I had a bit of a story with it. It's been relevant. I've got a couple of demos coming up tomorrow actually. So maybe that's why I'm feeling particularly like sensitive about this, where it's like you're taking money to do a video. You need to tell people when that's happening, right? Because otherwise, I don't know, why would people continue to, to watch your stuff if you're not being sort of open, transparent about some of these things that go on behind the scenes? Um, so I'm going to keep trying to do that. I kind of don't really get the backlash to the KDH thing because the reason he's making these videos is because there is stuff here that's maybe worth discussing in terms of ethics and all that sort of stuff. Um, and whether you necessarily like his particular style of um, giving out that information, I do think it's kind of important to, to know some of that stuff because there's potentially in this case a product that's been placed and loads of videos put in front of you about a specific brand and it's not actually been clear what that connection was between those people i don't know maybe it matters maybe it doesn't um let's get back to playing guitar i guess